Happy Monday. Um, as you can tell, I am not in my actual house. I am in a hotel, Toronto Airport. If you watched yesterday's video, you know that I did a brunch wedding and uh, that kind of inspired today's video. Actually, it wasn't supposed to be about this, but I feel that this is really important and it's how to deal with bad and not great lighting situations. So as you can see out here, um, it's pretty golden hour. It's pretty nice. This is Toronto Airport. Um, you can see some, some airplanes out there. Um, very, very good, favorable conditions. My favorite time of the wedding day to shoot usually. But unfortunately, during a brunch wedding, you're pretty much shooting from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m., which is kind of all the bad lighting parts of the day. So uh, I'm gonna run you through um, just like a quick little sample here. So this, obviously, not the best lighting situation in the world. Um, if I'm ever faced with this, whether the sun is like proper kind of off center golden hour here or it's like straight up in the air, um, if I have direct sunlight on people's faces, I always am just kind of rotating them away. So that something bit more like that. Um, and then I use my manual skills as a photographer or exposure compensation if you're shooting aperture priority, which this camera is, um, to kind of counter and make a more better, to make an exposure that is flattering to the person's actual face. And I am okay with letting a little bit of the background go out. Um, you can also underexpose a little bit and kind of bump shadows and post as well. Um, that's another method to do it. But as long as the sun is at their back, you're gonna get the best light possible out of that situation. Now the best, best light in bad lighting situations, um, and also in a situation like this as well, um, I'm gonna draw a little picture here. So here is the camera, here is my face. Um, my face should be in the shade from the sun, whether the sun is directly above me here or the sun is off access over here. Um, and then I also want the background to be in the shade. So as you can see right here, um, by looking at me, this isn't really that interesting of a background. Like, yes, it can, it can save you. Um, people are more critical about how they look in photos rather than the entire lighting situation in the photo. Um, but if you can find a situation where the background is also in the shade, so it's a wall or um, some shrubs, something like that, that is when you get kind of the ideal lighting situation where they're nice and backlit and you get um, kind of that nice rim light. And then you also get something that really glues the image together, which is a shady, dark background, not shady in a, a negative sense. So let's get on camera and watch some of the footage from today's wedding. One more quick thing that I'm going to add here is that uh, you'll see in a lot of my videos that I shoot in 85 or 7200 and in circumstances where you have to deal with bad light that the ceremony is just in a place that you cannot control that you can't put them in open shade um, that you just have to deal with what you're given I tend to shoot a lot wider than I would on a regular wedding day so that's how my style is influenced by the lighting conditions and I also know to not really invest too much of my time uh, that I can do family formals I can do kind of the basic documenting photos, but I don't spend like an hour with the couple out when it's bad light. I would rather spend 10 minutes with them then, get them to cocktails, get them enjoying their day, and then go back out over sunset uh, for like 15, 20 minutes or blue hour or um, at nighttime, whatever you like best. So those are my quick tips for today. Um, let's get to the on-camera video. I'm first going to stress the importance of if you can find open shade to find it. This is in sun, direct sun. Uh, their faces are in the shade. It is pretty good lighting, but when you bring them over here into open shade, everything is so much better, even though these images were just taken maybe three minutes, two minutes apart. Um, significant, significant difference. So if you can find open shade, it is always the best. If you can find open shade being kind of shaded by trees, um, even if it's spotty kind of on their backs, it does hold together to be a much better image. To give an example of what I mean by shooting a little bit wider than I traditionally would, this is a 24 millimeter f1.8, and I am photographing the couple a lot more with this lens than I usually would today. I'm also using a lot more of a muted color palette to really kind of remove the contrast of the bright sun uh, kind of crashing into the scene and trying to ruin everything. Another thing that I do is I actually use a lot of uh, places that I wouldn't typically use on a traditional wedding day to do images in like this uh, this hotel room hallway that actually ended up working out really well with kind of all the lines and the natural frames. Awesome. One of the most difficult things to work with is whenever the couple really wants a specific background and you kind of have to make it work as best as you possibly can. In this case, I'm shooting um, a 7200, but I am a little bit more wide than I usually would be. I'm doing both photo and video coverage today, so that's why I was shooting a video clip there. But here are some of the images that we took uh, just a couple of seconds before. Moving into the ceremony, we actually got fortunate. There was a little bit of shade, very spotty. And the first couple of people that walked down the aisle, I basically just kind of uh, gauged where their faces were actually in the shade. And I waited for those uh, seconds to happen. And I just took a burst of images just in that specific spot there. Uh, so that I know that I would have at least one good photo with their face in good light that's not spotty. If the dress has sunspots or something like that, it's not a big deal, but I just wanna keep their face as clean as possible when it comes to lighting. 
And for the ceremony, it's basically you're just documenting. If you notice that when they look to the left or they look to the right that their face is in good light, uh, I'm basically just waiting for those moments to happen. And yes, this is a lot more of a challenging ceremony than if I was shooting somewhere inside that was covered with good light. You are really just doing the best you possibly can within the given conditions. I don't want to make them change the entire like orientation of their ceremonies. So they're facing a different direction, uh, things like that. Even if I could pre-plan things like that, I really do want their wedding to actually be their own. I don't want to be the person that steps in and changes everything just for the sake of photography. So keep that in mind and always kind of strike a balance between what looks good photographically and what the couple actually wants to do and what they want their wedding day experience to be and try not to interfere with that too much. Also, I do want to point out that the Alt Hotel in Toronto here had a, a bad sushi and wine combo deal available. So uh, I'm enjoying my, the wine is good. The sushi wasn't good. Um, also, fun fact about uh, wasabi in pretty much every North American country, maybe Europe as well, is that it's actually just horseradish that's flavored like wasabi. It's not actually even wasabi. So that's the thing I found out at the wedding yesterday. And now you know it because you've watched this video. Um, so see you tomorrow. I'm going to be in Orlando. I think that it's going to be rainy. So hopefully, hopefully better weather than rainy. But I don't know. Just deal with what you're given. Kind of like a wedding day. Wow, that came together well. <laughs>